Good afternoon, Michael. It's uh, really great to, to be able to speak to you. Uh, just by way of introduction, uh, Mike has been a, a staunch supporter of JP Boats and Blades, and, and in fact, way before that, um, not only was he an oarsman uh, at JP, but um, he did a, a number of years of coaching as well. So uh, very, very familiar with the school, very familiar with rowing, and, and very committed to, to making sure that JP uh, rowing succeeds. So, so welcome to you, Mike. Thanks, Greg. Such a pleasure to to be here, and um, thank you for having me on uh, the show. And and also just a just a huge shout out to you guys that are, are really putting in a lot of time, a lot of effort. Uh, you know, I'm surely it's not wholly. Um, I'm sure it's not wholly unrewarded, but um, but really without the involvement of people like you, I think that the the club wouldn't be in the position that it is in, and in the position that it's hopefully going to be in. So so really, kudos and, and thanks to you guys. Oh, well, thanks for that. So, uh, onto the questions. Why, why rowing? Why, why did you start rowing? So, I, uh, you know, why I started rowing was 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 actually a. It was one of those things where, where I was I was the little kid that was dragged along to every rowing event, every regatta practices, sitting off the school like waiting for my brother to finish rowing, and I resisted for years starting rowing I was like there's no way I'm rowing it takes up all of your time takes up all of your sort of energy all of these things and um and I remember being on on December camp and uh and Ben Bernard had, had been hacking at me the whole week why don't you come and row why don't you just come and come and try it out come and do this thing come and and I don't think it was him eventually that managed to convince me but it was uh Lamorna Canton who eventually just grabbed a, a, a couple of us kids who, who were there sort of for our older brothers. She pulled us down to the, to the water and she said, no, come, you guys are going to get on. And I think between her and Ben, um, they popped us into mini skulls. They kind of gave us the, the this and that. And once we could actually start moving boats, even just a little bit, uh, that was me. I was, I was, I was done. I, I just knew this is the sport for me. There was a there was a kid by the name of Gareth Lucas, and we ended up like having this little friendly sort of competition, learning. You know, you're just getting your first few strokes in. But I remember as as soon as we we sort of started having these little fun races, I just remember thinking, this this is it. it like just this feeling of of moving this boat is is where it's at. All the other stuff that that came afterwards, all of the the friendships, the long-term friendships, um, that they feel lifelong now. Uh, all of that stuff was was really a benefit and a byproduct of that. Um, and and it was stuff that at that time I didn't really even know that I was going to get all of that. Uh, so so that was a huge uh, that became the reason. But I think the the start of it was was that one day on on a December camp. And I remember uh, Ben then sitting and, and we were watching what was then the initiation and Ben was like, why don't you just go and jump in there? And I said, uh, I'll wait my turn. Thanks very much. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, Mike, uh, how has your time as, as a JP, as a JP oarsman and, and in fact, indeed, as, as a JP coach as well, impacted your, your adult life? Yes, yeah, so Greg, uh, to be honest, it's it's... Sure, there's so much of my adult life that actually stems out of the fact that I was a rower. You know, um, we, were, we were chatting earlier and I said, you know, I, I swore to myself then I would not marry a, a, a girl who who was a rower, no offense to, to anybody out there. But, um, but as I said, you know, I met my wife literally also uh, it being on rowing camp um, with our older brothers. And at the time we were just like, oh, there's, there's Korean girl sort of thing. And and um, and all those years later, I'm 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 married to or two amazing children, and so that rowing element, that rowing sort of togetherness, that rowing family, uh, still surrounds me so much today. Um, I think aside from that, I think rowing just impacts you in such a massive way. Even if you've only done it for your school career or for adversity or whatever it is. I think you learn so much that comes out of that. Um, you know, my core group of friends is still made up of, of rowers. And I think that that is an impact that that's lifelong. Um, you know, the other things that you learn about responsibility, about effort, about commitment, 
all of those things, um, they're things that you don't notice. They just become a part of you, right? Uh, you, you know, you're committed to a thing and you follow through on it and, um, and you're responsible for things. And, and all of those things are, are, are things that you don't really notice about yourself. But the things that you do notice are the things that are, are around you, your friendships, your relationships, um, the way you can still get excited about you know, getting up early for something uh, as much as you might hate it at the time, I think later in life, you, you really do appreciate those things. Um, yeah, so, so I, I, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, that's a good response. I mean, and, and in terms of friendships and stuff, I mean, there's, that's a common trait. Um, I mean, I too have uh, all the people that I still know as friends today rode with me. So, I mean, it's, it's just an absolute testimony to the sport and, and the way it draws people together yeah i um, think i think it's there's something in that uh, uh, people who suffer yeah. together uh, stay together <laughs> somehow <laughs> at the end of it um yeah I, I mean so many of my closest friends are are from those days um and and in some way shape or form um have have been a part of rowing or are a part of rowing you know um, my brother's still very heavily involved <coughs> in rowing and it's just so good to see i mean if, if you look at all the relationships that, that he's got um some of them still from school uh, which are just such close strong relationships um built through rowing which is which is really something that you, you don't think about at the time when you first start rowing you're like okay well this is just the sport that i do um but it's actually a, it's actually become so much more than that it's a it's a life that you're building um and and it starts it, it starts just on those first under 14 rowing camps when, when you you don't know what the future holds but but there's so much um there's so much out there and i think you know going to going to a um very sadly uh one of the old boys old jp um jp old boys uh, passed on recently and going to his funeral and, and seeing how many of the attendants there were um were rowing jp rowing old boys um was really touching and 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 i think that that's that's amazing that 25 years on or however long it's it's been and you know those are still the guys who who, who are there for you absolutely so, so mike i mean you know over the last year and a half you've been a an incredible support to well jeffy boats and blades in particular um in terms of this interview and um so number one thank you for that and uh, re really appreciate it but um could you tell me more about your thoughts around uh, building the Jeffrey Rowan community and just working with um, with current and past oarsmen to equip, equip yeah, basically make sure that the, the, the club stays around for the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years? Yeah, um, sure, Greg, thanks. I think, you know, I think the first thing that you sort of, the way you phrased that question and, and the answer lies therein, right, is, is community. Mm -hmm. um, I think if you can establish a club beyond the club, uh, that's really where where the value comes in. You know, I, th I think ultimately uh, rowing is one of those sports that's that's not going to happen just because it happens, and it's not one of those sports that that uh, you know, yeah, it, it's not one of those sports that sort of happens by default. It takes a phenomenal amount of effort from everybody. Right. including the oarsmen um you know rowing's rowing's just one of those sports where where the ratio to <clears throat> the ratio of, of practice and effort to to performance is is otherworldly the amount of time and effort you put in on the water before you actually get to race for mm. five or six minutes is is ridiculous and i think the same um the same ratio goes into the amount of people that that are needed to support a club so just in terms of you know how i think we could we could keep the club going is to be honest i think you guys are doing a phenomenal job at the moment and that's where it starts right it's just just getting people involved getting people talking yeah. and thinking about the club again um you know i, th I think there, there's there's always been and there, there always will be an, an old boy community that owes so much to the club um, and 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 really are willing to get involved, and it's just about uh, number one, uh, people like you, pulling those people in and and getting them involved, 
And number two, um, just just that top of mind awareness and, and just, you know, thinking about the club and thinking about how they can help, thinking about, you know, and it doesn't have to be a, a, a kind of monetary contribution. It can be a matter of time, you know, um, going down on a Saturday morning to see, you know, how we can help, how we can get involved. You know, there's there's always maintenance that needs to be done. There's sponsorships that can be can be uh, arranged. There's a little bit of effort in terms of like just arranging um arranging get-togethers and, and raising a bit of money that way uh, so i think i think it's 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 just a bit of effort and a little bit of organization um and i think it starts with it starts with a few and then grows to many uh, hopefully so absolutely so hopefully you know we can get a lot a lot more commitments a lot more involvement from the old boy community i mean there's only so much that the that the parents can do um you know, and, and I think it's just about being asked. And, and, and funnily enough, I was talking to my father-in-law uh, the other night just e e about exactly this. And he said, he, you know, he's got so much experience uh, fixing boats from, from when he, his own kids were rowing. And he's still, he's, he's still keen to, to come down and, and lend a hand and do a bit of boat repair, maintenance, whatever's needed. Um, yeah, so it's, so there's there's the offer right there, right? So it's uh, it, it's just about uh, getting in touch with with the right old boys, um, and and you'll find that the, the depth of uh, of willingness is is definitely there. Absolutely, and and we can really testify to that. So that's that's brilliant. So um, Mike, as and I know this is always a, a difficult one. Um, Looking at your time as a Jeffy Orswin and potentially as a coach, um, can, can you think of one memorable moment that that, that you think with uh, great fondness and, and that stands up above all the other things that's um, that that's, uh, that you've experienced? You know, there's so many, uh, Greg. There, there, are, there are so many, um, and I think, yeah, uh, it 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 was actually. I remember being posed this almost this exact same question. Um, you know, there's some of those moments that I'm not allowed to talk about on camera. But um, <laughs> but I remember being posed that almost that exact same question by um, by a guy by the name of Gavin Esterhazen, who at the time I think was the master in charge of rowing, and we were standing on the bridge above the Buffalo River uh, at my last Buffalo regatta, and um, and in that moment he he said like. Why do you why do you do this? The sport is insane, and you know he was obviously one of the one of the masters in charge of rowing who who prior to his uh, role being asserted as the master in charge of rowing hadn't had much experience at all. <clears throat> and um, he said the sport is insane, and it's again about that ratio of the amount of effort that goes into everything else. And um, and my response to him was was just just to look over kind of the club the group of boys that were were sitting sort of just off of the bridge and they were like just having a laugh together and messing or messing around and i said i think that that's it like i think the the togetherness the being part of something big and bigger than yourself and and bigger than just being a sport is is really where it's at um you know the the early mornings and and the, the the kick about before getting on the water and then you know getting on the water and sound to business and and all those finishes clunking together and then and when you're rowing in an eight like those are the those are the flashes the moments that you remember they, and there's still that that feeling that those sounds and and those those moments sort of bring up in you i mean if if i get up early early in the morning uh to go on holiday now i still get that feeling of like you know packing the car and going off to rowing practice driving down to the vault to go and row at some ridiculous hour of the morning <clears throat> and and those are kind of the things that still bring back those those feelings of excitement those feelings of like i'm i'm not going to go and and like grab my way through this i'm going to go and see my mates and i'm going to go and, and and row and do something that i love and and experience something that that you know the rest of the world is is sleeping through and and just not not really being a part of um those are really the moments that that stick out for me 
uh, yeah, the, the, there's so many stories and 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 <clears throat> experiences that I had through through my time as a as a boy that that would just that just still are so that they feel still so fresh in my mind. Um, I do remember that there, there was a moment that I that I did have when I was coaching. I was coaching uh, I was coaching the under fourteen A quad and the under fourteen B quad, and I was I was trying to kind of we were very fortunate that year in that year to have two very talented crews um and i remember basically uh having this moment of realization with these boys where i was putting them through absolute hell and basically what i was doing is i was setting the b quad off at a at a kind of a head start and then making the a quad chase them down and um and i was just driving these boys to 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 get to kind of get more out of them and to get this connection going and this i just remember pushing the b quad so hard and and just I, I i remember thinking in the moment and i think kevin page was was coaching with me i remember thinking in the moment these kids are going to snap like they are going to snap because we had just you know put them through through hell on water and um and the B quad finished and they, they hadn't quite managed to hold the A quad off, but I remember how happy they were. They were like, this is, this is the best moment for us. And, and I just remember the look on their faces and, and there was something in those four boys that clicked uh, where they just realized like for the first time, I think in that whole season and by that stage, it was a December camp. They just realized this is a, this is what it's about. This is like, and um, and I think like just seeing that crew bond in that moment, where they were just like we we did this together, we we had this we, we, that felt amazing, and then getting off the water and being able to see how that crew suddenly went from being like just four boys that were chucked together and in, into a boat, how they suddenly became those mates, and and seeing kind of myself and my own relationship with my my friends that we were still coaching together all together at that stage seeing that same um vibe i guess uh come through in, in four 13 year old boys who had just just done something that they didn't think was possible was incredible um so i think that that was a that was a real moment that it, it still sticks with me i still think about that oh brilliant well mike thank you so much for your time thank you for uh, just uh, sharing all these memories with us and um, it's, it's always great to to hear other people's stories and 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 to be able to relate to that um, and for everybody else out there you know if, you, if you're looking to to be involved with the with the club and with Jeffy Boat and Blades and what we what we're looking to achieve please do feel free to reach out to us um, you can find out on all the information on our website which is www.jeffyboatandblades.co.za so Thank you for your time, Mike, and thank you for everybody who's, who's listening. Cheers. Yeah, you're so welcome, Greg. Thanks so much. Excellent.